up a head coach, Christian Staple from Benedictine University. They just won the second semifinal of the 2021 NCAA Division III Men's Volleyball Championship in Salem, Virginia. Coach, as always, we open with comments from you about today's match, please. Yeah, no, I mean, it was it was fun. I think that's the best way to describe it. I mean, they had a huge crowd in the stadium today. And um, just we talked about canceling out the noise and just being, you know, for each other. Um, we, we mentioned before the game just – one one thing matters so today is tonight's the only night that matters so we'll figure out everything else after this but um just do it for each other one point at a time one set at a time one timeout at a time um just one team together i think they really did a good job of doing that so um but again it was we knew it. We we're able to watch film on them they're a great team they've had a great season thus far so just coming in i'm really proud of the way the guys responded and like again we felt good about the scout and that really just propelled us to what we want to do this tonight yeah, we were we were thrilled just to have a match here that wasn't only three sets for the first <laughs> one since since the first match of the tournament being down here on Wednesday. We had one that went three, uh, or I'm sorry, went five. Talk a little bit about just the aspect of going through that match and just knowing you're going to have to grind out a result there toward the end. Yeah, I mean, like we kind of talked about the, this entire week, we never expected it to be easy. And, you know, I think to get to the championship, I mean, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Uh, obviously, we battled, we fought. Um, you know, trading sets throughout the entire way. But again, responding is the way you want to do. And it's all about moments and just responding within the set, but also like after timeouts, um, after service runs and things like that. And I think they would really did a really good job of that. So moving forward, we're going to have to do that tomorrow because Carthage is a really good team and uh, we've seen them before this season. So, um, you know, but overall it's been really good for us. Well, we've, I've got two guys in here with me with Rob and Evan. They're going to have some questions for you. Yeah, I yep. want to talk about uh, a little bit about Jacob Rigo. Right, he, he was a, maybe a little bit in the beginning of the match, wasn't finding the tempo, uh, but was still contributing in a, a lot of different ways. And then in that fifth set, uh, it seems like he made big play after big play. Talk about his impact a little bit. Yeah, no, I think, you know, he saved his best volleyball for the fifth set. I mean, I mean he was negative going into maybe set three and set four, um, but he figured it out and it wasn't necessarily to go away from him. We have to keep, he's a big component of our offense. So we can't just stop going away from him because he's not scoring. So continue to trust in him and Mike had a lot of trust in him to execute when it mattered. And man, I mean, the kid dug how many balls, 16 balls. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. So, um, and, you know, I think that he found a way to help us when he wasn't scoring and it was just a phenomenal job. Coach, a lot of the love for your program goes to Olsen, McGro, Rigo. But if you listen back to the broadcast, it was all about Radomski and Samaris for me tonight. Those guys set the tone with their defense. Samaria's on the back line, getting great touches on Michael Barron. And, and Mark Radomski, that guy's got wheel estate here in Salem on that left hand. Um, how <laughs> do their plays infuse your team with energy in a match where it was such a tug of war to control momentum? Yeah, no, we know coming in, like, when Mark Mar has had a great tournament thus far, so we kind of knew he's going to have spots to be open. And can we push tempo to him and find a way for him to score? And um, he did a great job, you know, getting established early on which open, open up chase. Um, you know, we talk about establishing our pins and then we can find our middles. And that's kind of what the game plan was today. But, um, you know, Marty is a big energy guy. And when, man, he has the biggest smile in the world. So when he's smiling, we're all pretty good. So um, overall, you know, I'm just so proud of him and the efforts that he's done. Um, you know, he's a big catalyst to what we want to do as a team. And um, he's just a big reason why we stay together as a team. And he's done a phenomenal job with that. Personally, for me, I'm, I'm the number one guy of the fan club for Tim Foliard. <laughs> like undersized middle, uh, I'm just letting the world know that that's my dude now going forward. So talk a little bit about about him because he's a little bit unconventional and what he brings for you guys. Yeah, he's just man workhorse. The kid works so hard, and um, you know he is one of our captains on the team. He's one of the leaders, and um, he will do anything that we need him to do. And like I mean, last night he had 500, um, hitting 300 in a semifinal game. Like he's just doing everything we need him to do. Not necessarily he's got to, you know, be off his charts with kills, but, like, he's efficient, and that's what we need him to do because if he's efficient, then we find openings for everybody else. So, again, he's just a great job. He is so smart when it comes to following a scout and block setups and things like that. And, just, again, he just his IQ is just off the charts. So, Coach, I think it's time to ask the question. A third showdown with Carthage, a <laughs> battle of the Midwest for the national championship, what is going to make this matchup different than the first two you had with the Firebirds this season? Yeah, um, you know, JW and I talked about this. And, um, you know, like I talked about yesterday, he's one of my best friends. And 
I texted him before, like, before the game and said, go get it done, brother, and let it have, have it be us. Um, we were both assistants in the MEVA at the same time. He was at Purdue Fort Wayne. Um, I was at McKendree, so we've seen each other a lot. And it's just really special to compete for a national championship against one of your best friends. And um, it's amazing. So, um, again, we talked about when we played them at their place this season, if you guys want to see them again, it has to be in Virginia. And we literally said that as soon as we left the gym. And because we didn't feel like we gave them our best shot. So now we worked, we get that shot again, and we'll see how we do tomorrow. Go ahead and turn it over there to Tim in the, in the room with you there. Yep. I guess just the only thing I want to ask is, uh, I mean, what can you say about your defensive performance? Not throughout this tournament. I mean, you guys are scrambling so many times, but yet you're keeping balls alive and still finding a way to recover. Yeah, no, it's amazing. These guys know how to follow a scout. <laughs> there's, there's no other way to say it than that. Um, and, you know, we kind of knew, you know, Southern Virginia had the most creative offense I've ever seen um, out of any program. And, you know, they were moving things around, going tandems, running bits. Um, it was super impressive. And, you know, we watched the film. We kind of knew the patterns, the matchups that we wanted. And, um, you know, just for us, they follow the scout. I mean, 12 blocks, amazing. And still to have 51 digs, like, that's just them following the defensive scout the best they possibly can. And I'm just so proud of them for doing that. Tim, you done? That's it for me. Okay. Well, Coach, thanks for being here with us uh, tonight. We're looking forward to that third matchup between you and Carthage tomorrow, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time in the Salem Civic Center for the Walnut and Bronze <laughs> Trophy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Sounds great, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Go ahead and put it on uh, mute there, and we'll, and we'll slide in Chase. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Chase, how are you there? Good, how are you? Good, and you look good in the screen, so we're all set here. The uh, It's recording right now, but I'll still kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do here right now. Uh, my name is JJ Neckloff. I'll kind of guide you through the process. I've got Rob with me. I've got Evan with me. They were on the call for the Turner stream to see you guys play that epic match against Southern Virginia, so we've all got questions for you. And then Tim's in there with you, too, so he'll have one for you as well. Sound good? Okay. Sounds good, yep. All right, if you're all set, here we go. <clears throat> Joined by junior middle hitter Chase Olson from Benedictine University. They just won the second semifinal of the 2021 NCAA Division III Men's Volleyball Championship in Salem, Virginia. You know, Chase, you got out to a really quick start there, really efficient, really throughout the match. So also going to brought what you were doing there with those quick sets with, with your center just to get really on the right foot against Southern Virginia. Yeah, Mike was giving me great sets all night long. And, you know, on our scout, we wanted to emphasize running through the middle, right? Like getting our pins good, good opportunities on the outside. So um, it was it was really on me tonight to put those balls away. Mike was doing a great job setting and uh, the passers were absolutely phenomenal against some some. That's probably one of the best serving teams we've seen all year. So uh, shout out to all my guys. And uh, they really helped me tonight. Turn it over to, to Rob and to Evan here for some more questions. Chase, you were, you were so good offensively that when you didn't get a kill, I was surprised. Uh, you were just lights out out there. But talk a little bit about facing an offense like Southern Virginia where they're so creative and guys are moving all over the place. What that takes as a middle, that kind of vision to, to be able to stop it? A lot of luck. Uh, that center is really good. Um, he was making me jump all night long. Um, he was getting solo blocks for his pins. They run a really high uh, tempo out to that uh, outside who bangs balls. But um, besides that, it was fast. It was getting me jumping all over the place. But I was just trying to try my best to stand still and then watch the set and then make the move, right? Not guessing too much and try just trying to react as best I could. Chase, JJ mentioned the ability that you and Mike LeGro to have to run that quick offense. But you're really able to extend that offense a lot deeper when Mike is off 10, 11, 12 feet even sometimes. Talk a little bit about how you guys have built that relationship in his only year as a starter to be so comfortable running a high risk set when you're not necessarily perfectly in system. Um, yeah. So back, back when he wasn't a starter, he and I in practice, we would always practice like those kind of weird long sets. And just now that he's in the starting position, uh, he still has that confidence to find me when he's, you know, 10 feet off the net, just throw it up high and, I can get up and, you know, most of the time I don't have a block up with me. So uh, it's a lot of history going back between us. We've been together for three years now, and uh, he really trusts me to, when he's eight feet off the net, to lob it up high, and I can go and get the kill. Got Tim in the room with you there. Tim, go right ahead. Chase, what can you say about the balance of this team? The balance. Um, it means everything, right? Like, we don't have one guy who's going to 
um, take all the swings on, like like uh, they did on Southern Virginia. We have guys who, when one guy's not playing well, we throw it out to another guy. So um, it's just trying to find who's playing the best in any one moment and get the ball to them and kind of get out the way. How are you feeling after three matches in three days? Oh, my, my body's feeling it. Um, I was getting some work done with Bella in between that fifth set, and uh, we're going to have to do some yoga tonight to prepare for tomorrow. I, I would say find the ice tub, man. That's what it's got to be. I mean, that's what my 40-year-old body would want. So I'm with you on yeah. that one. Thank and congratulations you. on reaching this point. We look forward to watching you and, and your teammates take on cards. It's tomorrow for the national championship, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time in the Salem Civic Center. Thanks a lot, Chase. Awesome. Thank you. Go Eagles. <laughs>